Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, it's Aya Fair. I'm a third year medical student at the University of Cambridge and with interviews coming up, I thought I'd do a video of last minute tips for a successful interview. As a medical student, some of the tips are more tailored towards STEM subjects, but a lot of the tips can be used for any subject. My number one tip would be to prepare for the expected. So there are typical questions that we all know will probably come up or have the possibility to come up, such as why are you studying this subject or why are you studying medicine? Why Cambridge or Oxford? Why this college? And having an idea in your head of how you want to answer these questions will really help you because in the interview is just one less thing that you have to think about and use your brain power on since you already know how you want to answer these questions and it will just help you to be less stressed in the day knowing that you already have kind of a model answer for these questions. Other expected things to include your personal statement and your SAQs, so things that you've included in your personal statement and things that you've included in your SAQs that you need to be prepared to talk about any part of any of these. So that could be your work experience or your volunteering or just things that you talked about. In my personal statement, I talked about work experience and skills and things needed for a doctor a lot. And I was actually questioned on like why I thought some qualities were more important than others that I didn't include in my personal statement. So just knowing your personal statement back to front, going through it and even asking yourself questions about some certain lines or some certain sentences like why did I write that? Why did I think that? Have I changed my mind since then? Is there something more important that has come up? Is there a piece of medical technology that I mentioned in my personal statement that has been swapped for a better one or has been upgraded in some way? Yeah, just having key answers or even just taking time to think of how you would structure answers for these questions will really help you on the day and just help you to have less stress. My number two tip leads up from the first tip. So which is to know what you've written in your SAQ. In your SAQ you mention some of the subjects that you would have covered by the time of the interview and it is important to know those subjects very well. So that includes AS and A2. You need to make sure that your knowledge in these subjects are up to par because they could ask you anything and considering the cohort that you would be interviewing with, the types of people that will also be in the interviews, you need to make sure that you don't trip up on this bit that you can control. There might be some weird questions that come up that will be out of your control because you couldn't see them coming, but knowing your A-level knowledge is something that you can anticipate and is in your hands right now. So just make sure that the level of your A-level and AS knowledge is up to par. My third point is to read around your subject. I suspect most of you would have done this already to write your personal statement, but you're just doing some extra work that you may not have included in your personal statement. So read around your subject in terms of A-levels. So go a bit further, ask why does this happen? Why does this mechanism do? What benefit does this organ or the way it works have on humans compared to animals? Ask why does this organ work differently in humans compared to animals? Why is it located in a different place? Was it because of evolution? These are things that you shouldn't be afraid to think about. Reading around your subject could also include your specific points of interest that you may have mentioned in your SAQ or your personal statement. And reading around it could you go into a little bit more detail of the effects these things might have on the general population or on individuals and just being able to talk about it. The main point of the interviews is, is to for them to hear you and to hear your personality, to hear how you explain things, to hear how you converse. So it's most important that you build the skills to be able to explain what interests you to someone and that could be done by forcing your siblings to listen to you, forcing your parents to listen to you or just talking in a mirror and explaining why something interests you particularly or how a certain process works. My fourth tip is to be enthusiastic and to show that you're really interested in the subject and like I said before to practice speaking quite excitedly 
I am quite a calm person and I don't really raise my voice too much but during my interview I had to kind of overdo my personality because the, if I was to talk normally you'd think I don't care about the certain subject but during my interview I had to really I exaggerate my facial expression, use my hands to talk and just to sit up straight and really raise my voice and just come across as someone that's very interested in the subject and really excited to just tell you about how much I know about the subject. My fifth tip is to think out loud. Now this is probably something that you've heard a lot but is really helpful. When you think out loud the interviewers will know your train of thought and they'll be able to follow it that way. Sometimes they might ask you a question that will need multiple steps and if you miss one of the steps you might go completely the wrong way. If you think out loud and you go through the steps out loud with them hearing you, if you try and go the wrong way or if you're way off balance they'll be able to pivot you back in the right path and that is beneficial for them and for you. They want to know that you're a teachable person and being able to adapt to new information and being able to change your mind when you come across new information is very important to be teachable. So that is what they would want to see. Also, if you're uncertain, just put out some possibilities. Don't speak before you think, but after you think and you're still a little bit unsure, just say a few ideas out loud and they will probably point you which one is the right direction. Number six is particularly for STEM students and it's to practice interpreting graphs and data. So that is just speaking out loud and explain what you see, kind of what you have to do in um, A level biology. But if you're not doing biology, it might still come up in your interview. So just go through what you see, going through the um, different axes, what the graph represents and being able to work from there trying to suggest what will happen if the graph was to move left or right, up or down, what the impact of this data might have on individual people and what it means towards the general population as well. So being able to talk out loud about what you see about figures will really help you in the interview as well. And last but not least is be confident in your abilities. Now to be able to even think about applying to Oxbridge you must be definitely very bright and very smart so don't doubt yourself for one bit and they can tell when you're confident when you feel a little bit shy even though they won't put you down. And it's just a better atmosphere for you and the interviewers if you aren't coming across as too nervous and ways for you to be confident is to establish a morning routine that you do before the interview whether it's some form of exercise, stretching, talking to your parents, talking to a friend, just something that will calm you down and really energize you whether it's um, morning affirmations or just certain things that you know that will relax you and just put you in the best frame of mind. Above all, whichever way you think the interviews went, great or not so great, you'll be fine. Whether you get in or you don't, you'll be fine. Just know that the interviews are for you as well. The points of the interviews are to check whether Oxbridge is right for you as well as whether you're right for Oxbridge. And with a unique form of teaching in these universities, they would want to make sure that you'll be happy in that type of environment. And that is why they do interviews as well so i wish you all the very best knowing all your interviews and my dms are always open on instagram if you want to ask any last minute questions and i will link down below some videos i use to prepare for my cambridge interviews and then my medical interviews overall yeah so make sure you like comment any questions you might have and subscribe and share with all those who are doing the interviews. Good luck!